the special counsel in the Russia investigation revealed that President Trump's ex-national security advisor has been cooperating with multiple investigations after lying to the FBI. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. It has now been two years since the Trump administration first faced questions about its ties to Russians and the firing of national security advisor Michael Flynn. And it's worth remembering just how many times they've changed their story since then. All the way back in January 2017, for example, when the Flynn allegations first emerged, Vice President-elect Mike Pence insisted that the campaign had no contacts with Russians of any kind, period. Was there any contact in any way between Trump or his associates and the Kremlin or cutouts they had? I, I joined this campaign in the summer, and I can tell you that uh, all the contact by the Trump campaign and associates was with the American people. Did any advisor or anybody in the Trump campaign have any contact with the Russians who were trying to, to meddle in the election? Oh, of course not. And uh, I, think, I think to suggest that uh, is to give, give credence to some of, uh, of, of, these, uh, of these bizarre rumors that have swirled around the candidacy. Bizarre rumors around the candidacy? Bizarre rumors were the candidacy. <laughs> Trump campaign. Trump campaigned for president like a high school sophomore gossiping at his locker. <laughs> Did you hear Barack was born in Kenya? And Ted Cruz's dad killed JFK, pass it on. <laughs> and you know, he doesn't get as much credit for it, but Mike Pence is just as slippery of a liar as anyone else in this administration. The only difference is that when he lies, he crinkles his brow and he uses a solemn tone. And when Trump lies, he sweats like a fugitive is being chased by a pack of police dogs. Just look. Just look at the differences in how they lie. Both of these statements were equally untrue, and they were both made around the same time in early 2017. I joined this campaign in the summer, and I can tell you that uh, all the contact by uh, the Trump campaign and associates was with the American people. Well, I had nothing to do with it. I, I have nothing to do with Russia. I told you. I have no deals there. It's like when the cops separate two suspects in a bank heist. <laughs> And one of them says, I'd like to speak to my lawyer. And the other guy's in the next room screaming, it was all Mike's idea. <laughs> also, why does Trump always hold his hands out like this when he lies? It's like he's already practicing to get handcuffed. <laughs> or to hold up a name slate for his mugshot. Seriously, whenever he does that, whenever he does that, I have the strong urge to throw him a basketball. Think fast. So that was what they said at first, that there were no contacts with any Russians of any kind, period. Then we found out that Flynn had secretly spoken with the Russian ambassador about lifting sanctions on Russia, and that he lied about it to the FBI. A few weeks later, Trump fired him, while also insisting that Flynn hadn't done anything wrong. Mike Flynn is a fine person, and I asked for his resignation. He respectfully gave it. He didn't have to do that because what he did wasn't wrong. When I looked at the information, I said, I don't think he did anything wrong. If anything, he did something right. I was not happy with the way that information was given. You know, he was just doing his job. Then why did you fire him? <laughs> Mike, you come in on time every day. You make lots of money for the company. The guys at corporate love you. Clean out your desk, bud. <laughs> and if you closed your eyes and just listened to him, you'd think Trump was arguing with his identical twin. He resigned, but he didn't have to. He did something wrong. If anything, he did something right. <laughs> I can't be mad at you, identical twin. <laughs> then, of course, it came out that almost everyone around Trump had secret contacts with Russians. Jared Kushner tried to set up a secret back channel with the Kremlin. Jeff Sessions met with the Russian ambassador. Trump's foreign policy advisor met with Russians in Europe. And Stephen Miller moonlights as Vladimir Putin's shoulder raven. <laughs> and then... After we found that the president's son, Don Jr., met with Russians offering dirt on Hillary Clinton in the summer of 2016, the story shifted again. They stopped saying there was no contact with Russia and started insisting there was no collusion with Russia because anyone would have taken the meeting, and besides, nothing came of it. For me, this was opposition research. They had something, you know, maybe concrete evidence to all the stories I'd been hearing about, but they were probably underreported for, you know, years, not just during the campaign. So I think I wanted to hear it out, but really, it, it went nowhere. This was a meeting to get information on an opponent, totally legal and done all the time in politics, and it went nowhere. I did not know about it. 
It was totally legal. It went nowhere. I didn't know anything about it. Trump's like a kid who didn't study for a multiple choice test and fills in all the bubbles. <laughs> As a general rule, if you have three different alibis, none of them are true. If your boss asks you to take a drug test and you say, I've never smoked marijuana in my life, I didn't inhale, weed is legal now, get ready to pee in a cup. In fact, yesterday, GOP Senator Chuck Grassley was asked why the president's tweets get him in trouble so often, and he offered a solution that I don't really think would work. Hey, uh, listen, the president could solve all of his problems if he just showed the pre his wife the tweet before he punches a send button. Oh, come on. You think he talks to his wife? She's the only person who, if Trump said there were no contacts, I would believe him. Also, when I look at Chuck Grassley, I don't exactly think social media strategist. I think he was one of those dudes eating lunch on that steel beam. <laughs> In fact, Grassley has his own weird tweets about the Russia investigation. After the Don Jr. meeting surfaced, Grassley himself tweeted, Dems, don't go berserk about Trump assos talking with a Russian lawyer about Russian adoption policy. I and a Dem Sen did same advocacy with Russian foreign men. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> did you type that during a fist fight on top of a moving train? You think Trump should show his tweets to his wife? You need to show yours to a first grader. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a great speller, man, but I think this is all wrong. <laughs> so their story went from there were no contacts with Russians to there was no collusion with Russians to we tried to collude, but nothing came of it. But then, as one Trump associate after another was indicted or pled guilty, the Trump team changed their story again. Trump's lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, insisted that Trump himself couldn't be guilty because he didn't do the hacking himself. I'm not even know if that's a crime, colluding about Russians. Okay. <laughs> you start, you start yeah. analyzing the crime. The hacking is the crime. The well, hacking uh, is the crime. That certainly is the original crime. Well, the crime. president didn't yes. hack. Of course not. That's the original crime. <laughs> he didn't crime. pay them for hacking? Of course he didn't pay for the hacking. Trump doesn't pay for anything. <laughs> if Mueller doesn't take Trump to federal court, Putin might have to take him to the people's court just to get the money he's owed. And then Rudy just straight up said the collusion is not against the law. I've been sitting here looking in the federal code trying to find collusion as a crime. <laughs> it's not. Collusion is not a crime. I like the idea that Giuliani's been looking in the federal code trying to find the word collusion. <laughs> just because that word isn't in there doesn't mean it's not a crime. It's like a public defender whose client is accused of murder. Good news. I looked in the federal code and the words shoved off a balcony aren't in there. So you're home free, baby. <laughs> Trump, of course is also under investigation for obstruction of justice for asking then-FBI Director James Comey to shut down his investigation of Flynn and for signaling to witnesses like his ex-campaign chairman, Paul Manafort, that if they refuse to cooperate with Mueller, he'll pardon them. And so now Trump's defenders on Fox News are trying out a new argument. If he obstructs justice in public, it can't be a crime. Some critics of the president said, well, this is obviously him trying to obstruct justice, but if that's the case, he's obstructing justice in front of the world. I mean, yeah. can you actually obstruct justice if you are not doing it in secret? Oh, it can still be a crime if you do it in public. <laughs> for example, no one's ever been arrested for private urination. <laughs> now, one of the potential witnesses who Trump has expressed support for on Twitter is his former advisor, Roger Stone, who allegedly had secret contacts with WikiLeaks, along with an associate, Jerome Corsi, a longtime right-wing conspiracy theorist. And Stone responded by claiming Mueller had pressured Corsi into making that confession. This is really simple. Um, it shows what happens when you hotbox a 72-year-old man for 40 hours, as the Mueller interrogators did. Wait. <laughs> they hotboxed him? So they put him in a car and made him smoke weed until he confessed? <laughs> you know what's a funny word to say? Putin. <laughs> Putin. Putin. <laughs> In order to believe Trump and everyone around him are innocent, you'd have to believe that they've been lying for two years because they did nothing wrong. But the Cohen plea deal and the Flynn memo make clear that Mueller knows they lied and he can prove they lied. I don't know if Trump will ever try to fire Mueller, but if he does, even Trump will have to say... He was just doing his job. This has been A Closer Look.